Hello guys, welcome back. In the last lecture, we worked on the connection model and implemented its relationship with the user model. Now in this lecture, we will move forward in order to send connection requests from user. Okay, so first let me open a other user profile which is not the current user so here you can see that we already added the link to send the connection request on the profile page of a user and it is visible only if user is not the current user itself and it is not already connected with the current user okay but right now this link will work as a get request but we need to make it some modification here because when the user click on this link, we will send the request for creating a connection with pending status and we will do this using a stimulus controller and the request will be sent as the turbo stream format. Okay, and so far in this project, we worked enough on the stimulus controller, but this time we will do something different because now we will not open any form in the bootstrap model. Instead, we will use this stimulus controller to send the post request to the rails controller okay so let's do that first come to the terminal and in the terminal open a new terminal tab and here we need to generate a new stimulus controller and name it as connections okay so what you can do here rails g stimulus and name this controller as connections okay this will create a new connections controller.js file in the app javascript controllers okay now let's open the member personal detail partial where we added the link to send the connection request okay we will uh, do some changes in the controller later after making some changes here so first what we need to do here we need to add some data attributes to connect this with the stimulus controller okay so let's add the data attribute first so first we need to add the data controller okay and what controller we generated that is connections connections and then we need to add data turbo method that is post okay because if you do not mention patch post or delete along with your request then the request will be considered as the get request okay but we will add turbo method post here so whenever you click this link this will this link will work as a post request okay so turbo method data turbo method and here we can use post sorry okay and then the next uh, data attribute is the connections target okay i mean we need to add some data target here that we can use it within our stimulus controller okay so to add targets for a stimulus controller we need to make it like data your controller name then target okay so what our controller name is connections so we will use here connections target and then make it like connection okay and then some add some other data attribute like requester id as current user dot id and other one is connected id and that is the user dot id okay okay and save this now look at the data attributes okay the, so the first data attribute is the data controller it will connect this link with the stimulus controller with name as connections stimulus controller okay and the data turbo method attribute is representing here that a post request will be sent when this link is clicked and the data connections target attribute will set the link as the target element and it means that we can get the other attribute values using this target and the data requester ID and data connector connected ID are the params that we need to create the connection. Data requester ID holds the ID of the current user and the data connected ID holds the ID of the user from which the current user wants to connect. Okay, and that's all about this link. Now we need to make changes in the connections stimulus controller accordingly. So open the connections stimulus controller from the app JavaScript controllers. Okay, and here, first let's define some target elements so what we can do here at the top of this controller or within the top of this controller so static targets and here we need to define the target name that we provided to the link so we provided connection okay here you can see that in the link we provided this 
connection as the target okay so now we need to use this static target in our link okay now let's implement the initialize action here we need to enable our link to invoke a function to send the post request when user click on the link and using the initialize function uh, whenever our stimulus controller get initialized on the dom we will add an event or a data action attribute to the link on which our controller is connected okay so after the connect what you need to do uh, write an initialize function here initialize and in this initialize function what we need to do this dot element dot set attribute and here first add data action and then uh, use the click event that is our controller name hash the function name so connections okay and then we need to write our function name here so we can write we can name this function as let's say prepare connection params okay so this is the function that we will call whenever a user click on the connect link okay so now we can wrap the words okay so just wrap the words and copy this function name now we need to implement this function okay so here we can do okay now in this function first we need to use event dot prevent default okay and after this we need to find the url of the attribute so this dot url equal to this dot element dot get attribute href okay so this line will give the uh, link that is attached to the connect button link okay and now we need to define the element using the target attribute that we defined here that is the connection okay so how we can define that const element equal to this dot connection target okay so here you can see that this is our target name okay and after the target name we need to use the target okay so this is our connection target and now we defined the element okay now we need to fetch the requester and connector id using the data attributes that we added on the link okay so how we can achieve that so here if you wish you can remove this space here const requester id requester id is now element dot data set okay why data set because requester id is present as a data attribute in the link here you can see data requester id okay so we need to call element dot data set dot requester id okay and similarly we need to get the connected id as well const connected id equal to element dot data set connected id okay save it and now we need to initialize the form data instance okay but what is form data so the form data is an interface which provides a way to construct a set of key values where representing form fields and their values okay which can be sent using the fetch api so first initialize the form data so how we can do that const connection body is equal to new form data okay and you can read more details about the form data on the mozilla document okay so make it form data okay and now we need to append the params to this form data instance okay so how we can do that connection body dot append okay and here we first need to provide our param name here okay so what will be the param name here so we will send this params into the connection hash so connection and then you need to make it user id and its value must be the requester id the requester id this requester id that we fetch here okay so now make it requester id and do the same thing for connected user id as well because we added 
the connected user id attribute into the model okay into the connection model okay so connected user id is equal to connected id okay since when we when a user send a connection request initially it will be in the pending state so we can pass the status params as the pending i mean we can uh, pass the string value for the status okay so just copy this line again and here we need to replace this connected user id with status okay and here we can pass it like pending okay now we need to implement the fetch function to send the form data params to a rail section okay here you can see that our connection body is now complete because we will add uh, attributes like just user id which is requesting for the connection connected user id for which user wants to connect and the status which is pending by default okay now let's implement the fetch function okay because we need to uh, call the post api using a fetch function okay so fetch and for the first argument for the fetch function is the this dot url okay and here now just define a body and here we first need to mention the method of this request so this is the post request so method as post okay and then we need to provide headers and the header must be the key value pair okay and in this key value pair first we need to provide what format it will accept so accept and here we can provide text vnd dot turbo stream dot html okay now since we are sending this post request to the rails controller okay so whenever you send a post or patch or delete request you must your request must have a csrf token as a param okay and we can get the csrf token here from the head section of the document okay so what we can do here let's say x csrf token and its value must be like Uh, we can add document dot query selector and then we can provide meta here provide the name and that name is csrf token okay and then we can use the get attribute method here that is content okay i will show you like uh, whether this uh, meta tag is in our uh, browser document or in our browser page okay now we need to pass the body as a param okay so thus define body and here we need to send our connection body okay so this is our uh, uh, request is complete now okay now we need to handle the response so what we can do here then response equal to response dot text and again then html equal to turbo dot render stream message and here we can provide html okay why we are adding this line uh, i mean the turbo dot render stream message because after performing the create action successfully we need to replace some content on the dom okay so our stimulus controller has been saved here okay since it's a bit complex so let me explain you again so what we are doing here that we initialized a uh, initialize function first so whenever uh, whenever the stimulus controllers get connected with the link or the data controller connections okay then it will initialize a function and set a data action attribute to that dom element and when you click on the prepare connection param action or when you click on the link it will call the prepare connection params function and here you can do what we are doing event pre default that means we are preventing the default behavior of the link okay and then we are getting the url of the button 
and then we defined the target element here and using the elements data set we are uh, fetching the value of requester id and connected user id okay and then we initialize the form data instance okay why because we need to send the data params as a key value pair okay as we uh, accept this in the rails okay uh, so, so here we appended the attributes or the required parameters to our form data instance that is connection user id connected user id and status okay and after that defining the connection body we implemented the fetch function where you first pass the url and then we set up like method post headers like this and body connection body okay so now save this stimulus controller okay and uh, after saving this come to the browser and refresh the page okay so save it and then come to the browser and make sure you your server is running and you are on a detail page of a different user rather than currently signed in user okay now if you refresh this so first let me show you that how we are getting that csrf token that we mentioned here this csrf token how we are getting so come to the browser and inspect the page okay and here in the head section you can see that we have this csrf token meta tag okay so here you can see cs name is csrf token and this is the content okay so whenever you click on this link this uh, request will capture this value as the csrf token and it will be sent okay and now let's inspect this connect button okay so when you inspect this connect button here you will see that we have all data attributes that we needed for sending this request so here you can see data connection is uh, data controller is connections data turbo method is post data connections target is connection data requester id is 1000 that is the id of currently signed in user data connected id is one and then the url is slash connections and data action is click connections controllers prepare connection params method okay so this is our uh, link has been completed now okay but if you click on this link now you will see an error okay for example let me uh, clear the console and here if you click on this link you will see an error that 404 not found and you can also see this error on the terminal as well here you can see that started post connections and you are getting routing error that is uninitialized constant connections controller okay and why we are getting this error because we just created stimulus controller and we are just sending the post request through the stimulus controller but we did not create any rails controller to handle this request okay and we will create this controller in the next lecture but for this lecture our only purpose was to create an stimulus controller and using that we can send request to a rails app, a rails controller okay and along with this we learn how to handle data attributes in a stimulus controller and, and also how to send post request from a stimulus controller now in the next lecture we will implement the rails controller to handle this request and we will create the user connection and save them into the databases okay meanwhile try this lecture at your end and we will meet into the next lecture till then tata goodbye take care and stay safe